Believe it or not, we're now just two months away from the one-year anniversary of the right-wing freakout over Bud Light. And at this point, a lot of prominent conservatives have pretty much just moved on. Even Kid Rock announced that he's forgiven the company and he's no longer boycotting Bud Light after spearheading the initial boycott against them. And even Donald Trump is telling conservatives that it's time to forgive and forget, writing on Truth Social, quote, the Bud Light ad was a mistake of epic proportions and for that a very big price was paid. But Anheuser-Busch is not a woke company, but I can give you plenty that are. Now he goes on to make the case for them by explaining how they've spent money supporting farmers and also given away thousands of dollars of scholarship money and concludes by saying Anheuser-Busch is a great American brand that perhaps deserves a second chance. What do you think? Well, Trump, I think we should all consider what would Jesus do? And I think that Jesus would want us to forgive Bud Light for their sins. He would want us to forgive this beer company for doing the unthinkable and featuring a trans person in one of their sponsored social media posts. That's what I think he would do. But I mean, I've got to say, it almost sounds like Bud Light sent Trump a can with his face on it and paid him to do a social media post with the way that he was gushing about them. But they didn't sponsor him, at least not in that way. But Anheuser-Busch's lobbyist is hosting a fundraiser for him. So there's that. And it also doesn't hurt that he owns between one and five million dollars in stock in the company. So, you know, part of me wonders if he would still be willing to forgive and forget if it weren't for that conflict of interest. But who knows? You know, Trump is usually a pretty straightforward, honest guy. So I'm assuming that he's just really speaking from the heart here. But I mean, Trump basically said what a lot of other conservatives were already thinking. I think that secretly most conservatives think that the Bud Light freakout is fucking stupid, but they don't want to say that because they'd get flamed by conservatives who feel really passionately about this. But since Trump said it, now a lot of conservatives think it's safe for them to say it as well. For example, Caitlyn Jenner decided to share Trump's post and echo his remarks, writing on Twitter, quote, as someone that worked for this incredible American company and got to know them very well, I raced for Anheuser-Busch in the 80s. I agree with real Donald Trump. Look at what the company does for so many Americans and their track record over the years. They made a huge mistake and have paid a large price. I think it is time to move forward. I'm saying we should focus on big picture agreeing with 45. Now, it's been a while, so I just want to take a little bit of time to remind everyone what this supposedly huge mistake was. Bud Light sent one trans woman a single can of beer with her face on it for one social media post. It wasn't a commercial that aired everywhere. It was a sponsored social media post. But according to Caitlyn Jenner, that right there is tantamount to the company making a huge mistake. Now, I'm not going to defend a corporation because corporations in general are bad. They dodge taxes, they buy off politicians. But in this instance, the fact that they did a sponsored social media post, not necessarily my priority, not necessarily something that I would bring up in a criticism of large multinational corporations. But I don't actually think that Caitlyn Jenner believes that they made a huge mistake because if she actually believes that, then she'd also have to think that Fox News made a huge mistake by hiring her to be a contributor. But she's not arguing that Fox News went woke for hiring her because she's also trans, right? Of course not. That'd be preposterous. So what is she trying to do here? Well, she's trying to placate conservatives by throwing another trans woman under the bus in hopes that they'll accept her as the only good one. But it doesn't work that way, Caitlin, because the conservatives who are still outraged at Bud Light aren't simply mad because they think the company went woke or something. To them, it's worse than that. The company indirectly acknowledged the inherent validity of Dylan Mulvaney's transness, and they celebrated her gender identity. That, to them, is unacceptable because they don't think that trans people should exist in the first place, including you, Caitlin. But Caitlin Jenner has deluded herself into thinking that her conservative comrades might actually accept her if she says what they want her to say, but they will never accept her unless she renounces her own gender identity and disavows everything that she ever said about trans people. Now, I'm not saying this because I have some unique, unique insight into the minds of transphobes. I'm saying this because that's what they're saying. It's evident because of the way that they treat her. For example, she was absolutely skewered for that post, and unsurprisingly, many of the conservatives replied by misgendering and deadnaming her. One person says, bro, come on. If you want to know what DeSantis meant by listless vessel, here is a prime example. No deadname, they had their chance. Now you have another person that misgenders her. This person tells her she lacks self-awareness. This person says a transgender person says Bud Light isn't woke. Great endorsement. 
harassment. This person also misgenders her, saying, dude, you aren't helping his case. LOL. Fair enough, dead name. I may have a Budweiser again if it is the last one in the cooler. You, however, are not the guy to make the case for them. So just being completely cruel. And this person shared a gif making fun of her, but at least they had the courtesy to not misgender her, I guess. So, I mean... <laughs> There's that. But the most viral response I saw came from this person who tried to hypocrisy burn her, writing, Bud Light screwed up by working with the trans influencer, but they're not woke. To prove it, here's a message from our trans influencer. Now, that was retweeted by Matt Walsh, another ringleader of the Bud Light boycotts, who then responded to Trump's original post by saying, Anheuser-Busch has not issued an apology. Backing off of the most effective conservative boycott in history without even an apology would turn one of our biggest recent victories into one of our dumbest self owns. So these are the kinds of people who she is pandering to. And I love how he's just so proud of this. Just to kind of put everything into perspective, when leftists try to organize boycotts, it's because a corporation is union busting, right? Or they're treating their workers terribly or they're doing something, donating to politicians who are doing evil things. Leftists are currently organizing unions for tenants and protesting police brutality and calling for a ceasefire for humanitarian reasons in Gaza. And right-wingers, meanwhile, are organizing boycotts of woke beer companies. I mean, one side is completely unserious and the other side is actually trying to improve the lives of people. The difference is stark. But to get back to Caitlyn Jenner, you would think that she'd learn by now that it is literally impossible to ingratiate herself with the right so long as she's trans. But she's not taking the hint. And rather than opposing people who don't want her to exist, she's instead parroting their transphobic talking points. It's actually really sad if you think about it. Now, at the end of the day, what this comes down to is freedom. Trans people just want to be themselves. We all have the right to pursue happiness as human beings, and that's exactly why trans people choose to come out and transition in the first place. In fact, LGBTQ Nation reports the following, quote, 94% of transgender people said that they were either a little or a lot more satisfied with their lives since they transitioned. The 2022 U.S. Transgender Survey by the National Center for Transgender Equality found. Now, to put that in perspective, Lance from the Surfs explains, for comparison, people who get knee surgery can report dissatisfaction at rates as high as 30 percent but there's no one protesting outside of their doctor's offices and that is exactly correct so being trans is beautiful because transitioning is a radical act of self-love it requires courage and drive and i find that incredibly admirable but that doesn't mean that if they transition their lives are going to be easier despite being more happier with themselves because that same survey also found the following. LGBTQ Nation continues, while transgender people were overwhelmingly satisfied with their personal decisions regarding their transitions, they often found that others around them were not supportive. Only 67% of adult respondents whose families knew that they were trans said that their families were supportive of them, and 12% said that their families were unsupportive. That's so sad. That number increased for 16 to 17 year old trans people, 20 9% said that their families were unsupportive. The study also found evidence of widespread anti-trans discrimination. 18% of respondents said they were unemployed, far higher than the 3.6% unemployment rate for the whole U.S. population in November of 2022. Additionally, 34% said that they were living in poverty, and 11% said that they had lost a job due to their gender identity or expression. 3% said that they were physically attacked due to their identity in the previous 12 months, and 30% percent said that they were verbally harassed because of their trans identity in their previous 12 months. 5% of USTS respondents said that they had already left their state due to anti-trans legislation, and 47% said that they considered leaving their state since even more anti-trans legislation was introduced and passed in 2023 than in 2022. The numbers could be higher now. Alabama, Arizona, Florida, Georgia, Missouri, North Carolina, Ohio, Tennessee, Texas, and Virginia were the most most likely states for trans people to leave. And it's so sad, but not surprising. And as silly as the hysteria over Bud Light is, we can't just dismiss it as conservative snowflakery, conservatives being stupid, even though that is what it is. But what this is about is them trying to eliminate trans people from existence. Don't take my word for it. Listen to what they say. This is what Michael Knowles said the goal is. They want to eliminate them from existence. I think that the specific word that he used was eradicate. 
And the reason why hysteria over this boycott matters and is really serious is because the people screaming the loudest about the Bud Light boycott are the constituents of Republicans enacting laws that criminalize trans existence in these states. And this attack on trans existence isn't merely political. It is an act of violence, both directly and indirectly. For example, NBC News reports, NBC News identified 33 instances starting in November of 2020 when people or institutions singled out by libs of TikTok later reported bomb threats or other violent intimidation. The threats, which on average came several days after tweets from libs of TikTok, targeted schools, libraries, hospitals, small businesses, and elected officials in 16 states, Washington, D.C., and the Canadian province of Ontario. 21 of the 33 threats were bomb threats, which most commonly targeted schools and were made via email. The threats have been taking up government resources and have been highly distracting. In response to the threats, some schools canceled classes for days, while other stayed open following quick sweeps from law enforcement. Now, Chai Raichik, the stochastic terrorist who inspired these threats, has been embraced by Republicans and been embraced by transphobes. They like what she's doing. They don't mind that she is inspiring bomb threats against any schools or libraries that are supposedly indoctrinating kids into LGBTQ plus things. That's not how it works. You can't make someone be gay or trans. They just are or they're not. But they like that she's terrorizing people, essentially. In fact, she was just appointed to the Oklahoma Department of Education Library Media Advisory Committee, meaning she's going to get to decide for your kids what's appropriate, even though she doesn't have kids. So they're not trying to hide their desire to violently eradicate trans people by any means necessary. But Caitlyn Jenner thinks that they're going to stop at her for some reason. It's delusional. But let this be a lesson to her and anyone else who's still in denial about the right's genocidal intent. Their goal is to eliminate all LGBTQ plus people, and these fascists cannot be reasoned with. Anyone who tries to negotiate with these terrorists about the terms of the existence of an entire group of people is just as bad as them as far as I'm concerned. So even though it is really disheartening to see any LGBTQ plus person be subjected to that much hate and vitriol simply because of who they are. Caitlyn Jenner, she's the one who chose to prioritize her class interests over her own humanity. This is the bed that she made for herself, and now she has to lie in it. Mom. I'm gay. Gay. Gays. Gays. I'm transgender. Gender.